Hello, hello. Let's see. Um, so real quick, UPS just came. He's leaving now, but my dogs were going crazy. So hopefully they will calm down and you won't be able to hear them in the background. But let me see if I can invite somebody real quick. Um, if you are here, hi, if you are here, drop me a purple heart. So I know that you're here just making sure I'm on the right page. Cause it's not, um, hi, I see one of my girls on here. Hi. Um, okay. Christina. You guys, I am on the push for promotion group, right? Hi, Ashley. Hi, Tara. Um, I have my computer pulled up, but it's not showing me over here. So, um, all right. Hi. If you guys are watching live, give me a purple heart. If you're watching back on the replay, give me a hashtag replay. Um, today we're going to talk about why your circle matters. Um, I found a really interesting article that I feel like kind of hits all of the points that I wanted to get across about why your circle matters. And then I'm going to go into a little, um, I'm a storyteller by nature, so I'm going to go into a little um, backstory on the beginning of my Scentsy journey and my personal experience Hi, Angela. I'm also from Texas, the North Texas area. Um, but I also want to give you guys my personal experience on why your circle truly, truly matters. Okay. <coughs> so, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started only because for those that are going to come back and watch the replay, I don't want you to have to listen to me ramble and all of your, all of your time is precious and valuable. So, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but if you are here, give me a purple heart and say, hello, where are you coming in from? I am in um, a small town in Texas called Josephine. I'm about 45 minutes east of Dallas, so not many people have heard of Josephine, but we are growing at a rapid, rapid rate. And fun fact, my husband is also the mayor of Josephine, so there's that. Um, so... I get kind of squirrel, so <laughs> Eric, I love the championship in the back. So my son, when he was younger, um, see, I'm very squirrel. My son, when he was younger, he was like huge in a WWE, and we would take him to like um, um, Friday night, was it Monday Night Raw, and Friday Night Smackdown, something like that. I don't remember. Then he kind of grew out of it. Well, this summer, he's like legit into it again and we my husband got him that belt it's like an actual replica it's not one of the cheap ones you go buy at the store or something like that and he was like oh, I got I don't have anywhere so I gotta put it on your shelf and I'm like bro that, that is not that is not for your WWE belt okay um this is also a brand new shelf and I as you can see it is not done yet but that I guess I'm gonna have to incorporate that in there so that is why that championship belt is on my show. Um, so hi, my name is Shane Attorney, and I'm super excited to be here. Thank you, Mallory, for inviting me on to speak to you guys today about why your circle matters. Um, so I found this really interesting article from Simon Alexander Ong. He is a life coach author um, of a book called Energize. I have not read this book yet, but I just watched like a little YouTube clip of him talking about the book. Um, it's about making the most of every moment. Okay. And it's about how to maximize your energy levels around oh, my phone popped up. Um, I feel like that goes hand in hand with why your circle matters and mindset matters and all of that. Um, so his book is called Energize and Simon Sinek, who is also another motivational speaker author, he says that this book is exactly what we need in this moment. So I also love Simon Sinek. So 
I will drop the art the link for this article and the book on here whenever we are finished. But I just want to kind of I'm going to start with this article because, like I said, it it touches all of the points of why your circle matters. So um, Simon Ong says, for many years, I lived by the belief that how smart and talented I was would be the single most important factor in determining my level of success in life. Those are nice. I like that. Sorry. My husband, he, he has his own construction business and UPS just dropped off his signs and he was showing them through the office door and they're pretty nice. Um, anyways, squirrel, hello. Um, he said, the grades I thought I had to achieve through sacrificing nights, weekends, and holidays for having to consistently be regarded as one of the top performers in my class and how there had to be a mastery of all subjects studied regardless of interest. Now, I'm not saying that these accomplishments were of no use at all. He said, in fact, I'm incredibly grateful for all the opportunities and lessons which I've received from the pursuit of academic excellence. From entering adolescence to hunting down my first job while at university, it has allowed me to understand that hard work and perseverance are essential ingredients to getting what you want out of life, right? They are the catalysts that help turn visions into reality. He says, but what hit me over time, and particular, particularly in the last few years, is the fact that our success in life, more often than not, comes down to the people you spend the most time with. How smart are you? How talented are you? Where were you born? Where were you born? The family environment you grew up in. All of those things may play a small role of how successful you will be in life. But in comparison to the impact of surrounding yourself with people who can lift you up higher, it truly does not compare. Okay. Um, he says an individual may be born into riches, but live an unhappy life while someone from more humble beginnings may be able to manifest their dreams in record breaking time, all because of the company that they keep, which in turn influences their way of thinking and thus resulting in a mindset for success, okay? Our habits determine the person that we become. Environmental optimization is an important one that can have a profound impact on your well-being. Do you want to be successful? Then you need to surround yourself with successful people. Do you want to be happy? Surround yourself with happy people. Same thing with, do you want to be healthy? Healthy. Surround yourself with healthy people. Do you want to become more confident? Surround yourself with confident people. Like I posted earlier, in essence, we become more like the people that we hang out with. Jim Ron, also author and a motivational speaker, he says, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So I don't know, you guys may or may not seen it. Facebook gives... Facebook really never gives solid notifications for groups, right? Sometimes you miss things. Sometimes um, you see everything. So <clears throat> I made a post and I said, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And take a moment to reflect on the following. Who are the people that you spend the most time with? Do they elevate you? Do they bring you down? Are they proactive go-getters? Um do they exhibit qualities that you admire in people or do they just sit around and maybe criticize everything around them? And most, most, most importantly, I don't care who these people are. I don't care if they are family. I don't care if they are coworkers. I don't care who they are. Do they motivate you or do they drain the ever loving life out of you? We all have those people. Everybody has those people. I've had those people. I surrounded myself. I probably was one of those people way back in the day. Um, the awesome thing about being around positive minded individuals who have a habit of chasing their dreams and believe in taking responsibility for their lives is that you'll be inclined to grow in a positive direction as well. So think about that. Think, think of a situation where you were surrounded with a couple, with I don't know, with a few people, social gathering at a, at some sort of event. And the conversation was nothing but 
talking about this person, criticizing this person, maybe even making fun of this person. By the end of the day, like how mentally, how does that make you feel? Does that make you feel like a better person? Or is that going to kind of like drain, like drain your mindset versus you're in a group at an event or whatever the situation may be. And you're talking about goals and dreams or visions or things that you've done in the past that didn't work and asking for advice on how you can improve on something. And you have these other people that are in your circle or that you surround yourself with on a daily basis. And they are giving you ideas on how you can achieve those vision, make those, turn those visions into a, a reality and reach the goals that you want. By the end of the day, by the end of that conversation, how are you going to feel? Are you going to feel like motivated and inspired to jump in and go all in and just try to reach those goals that you're, that you're aiming for versus the other situation where Everything was negative and it was, oh, you can't do that or you shouldn't do that or you don't have enough of this to do that. Like, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, what situation would you rather have yourself in? Some, a group of people that like literally drain the life out of you or someone that's going to push you to get out of your comfort zone and reach the goals that you want to reach. So maximize the time, maximize the amount of time that, you spend with these people. Um, Robin Sharma, she is an author. Um, some of you may know her from the 5 a.m. club. She says, associate only with positive, focused people who you can learn from and who will not drain your valuable energy with uninspiring attitudes. By developing relationships with those committed to constant improvement and the pursuit of the best life, ha the best that life has to offer, you will have plenty of company on your path to the top of whatever mountain it is that you seek to climb. So, hey, Shauna, that's my girl, y'all. Shauna's my girl. She's my she's my number one in my circle, and we gonna we gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, so to finish this article, the ama he says the amazing thing about what we are today in terms of technology means that you can literally surround yourself with an inspiring people. It doesn't it doesn't mean that you need to be with a group of people or in a social gathering at all times of the day. Tech, you utilize the technology that you have and broaden your horizon um, through, he says Twitter, but I don't get on Twitter. So let's say follow inspiring people on Facebook, on Instagram, um, audiobooks, podcast. He said, as a result, I've put together a few ideas, including these modern methods on how you can be begin creating a more optimal environment for your personal growth and success. So, um, and this one right here plays into our business as well, because we always need to constantly be trying to build our network, um, whether it be for customers or to try to build our team. So attend events in your local town or city that appeal to your interest and you can that appeal to your interest can help you learn something useful or arouse your curiosity, make sure to bring business cards with you or brand yourself. Seek out people who have skills and qualities that you admire and that you can learn from. And most importantly, most importantly, never assume that you have nothing Never assume that they, meaning other people, um, have nothing to learn from you. You are valuable, you are capable, and you are worthy to share your knowledge with other people. People want to learn and also be inspired by you. We can always learn from somebody else, regardless of where they are in their own life or where they are in their own journey. There is something to learn from everybody. Minimize the time that you spend hanging out with the wrong crowd and healthy and unhealthy influences, pessimist and those that can hurt your chances of achieving the success that you want to achieve. Read more books, read more blogs, listen to more podcasts. Um, I love to go to Google and just search positive quotes. However, I'm feeling that day, go find something, be your own source of motivation. 
Yes, use your circle to motivate you, but you should also be your own so your number one source of inspiration and motivation every single day. Expand your library of knowledge and nurture your creative thinking. Again, he well, I've already said this, but he says listen to audiobooks, podcasts where you're where when you are commuting when you are commuting or if you're just relaxing. Do you have a do you work a nine to five job and you drive back and forth to work? Throw on a motivational podcast of some sort that is surrounding yourself and expanding your horizon and your circle, if you will, um, outside of those that you may physically and like uh, that you may physically communicate with on a daily basis, if that makes sense. Again, follow inspirational people and those you can learn from on social media channels. Um, we have tons of Sensi groups with tons of motivational and inspirational leaders that are willing to give everything that they know to help you be successful. Same with YouTube. Subscribe to news newsletters, which will help add value to your life and help towards your particular goals in life. And keep your perspective. While it's important to spend your time with those who are more successful than you, it is also great for you um, to. De While it's important to spend your time with those who are more successful than you, it is also great for you to develop to be. De oh my God! It is also great for your development. Another thing, you don't have to be perfect to be a leader or a consultant. You just simply need to show up, even if you fumble your words on trainings with lots of people, okay? Um, it's also great for, for your development to be around those who are at the same same stage as you, so the ideas and journeys can be shared, and those who may be below you, who you can inspire to share your own wisdom with, okay? Spend less time in front of the TV, and on your smartphone and more time getting out there and connecting with people because you never know what it might lead to. So um, I feel like this is just a touch on what it means or the importance of what your circle means. So I'm going to be a storyteller and I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. Okay. Um, my name is Shana Turney. I am fearless leader for Better Together Tribe. Um, this month, I have I celebrated my eighth anniversary with Cincy, and I've loved every single second of it. All the failures, um, all the mishaps, all the missteps, all the falls, all the everything. Um, because every single thing that I've been through over the last eight years in my personal life and within my Cincy journey have made me the person and the consultant and the leader that I am today. Um, I joined on a whim. I didn't join for any particular reason. I purchased Roosevelt the Rabbit um, for a girl at work. And when I gave it to her at the baby shower, everybody and their mama needed Scentsy. And I was like, I don't sell, but hold up. Let me figure this out. I've done direct sales before. Um, I was a legal secretary for the Collin County District Attorney's Office. It is the dist it is the county that I live in. I worked there for ten and a half years. My husband what worked for Road and Bridge in a neighboring county. And if you've ever worked for government or county or city, you know it's not like the private sector. Um in the corporate world, you get bare minimum raises. <coughs> budget only allows I know everywhere has has a budget, but in county, we only got paid what they were going to give us. No matter what our pay for performance showed, what we were graded at every single year, it was bare minimum all the time. So both of us working for, for two different counties, we lived paycheck to paycheck. And um, I always knew, he always knew, we wanted better for ourselves. We wanted a change. But at that time, I was a very fixed mindset person. Like, looking back, I'm not ashamed to say this. Um, I'm not embarrassed about that because, like I said, my journey has made me who I am today. But I was a very fixed mindset person. Um, I didn't do personal development. I would have laughed at you if you said I would ever be, would have ever done um 
formal trainings for Cincy or been on stage or do trainings like this or just simply show up and be willing to help others. Um, because one, fixed mindset. Two, my circle was extremely draining. But three, I was not confident in myself. I've always, I've always been a confident in a sense. Um, I've always been a go-getter in a sense. I've always been willing to go above and beyond. Um, but the circle that I was in, I was a, I was a follower, not a leader. Um, again, I ran with the fixed mindset. I wasn't, didn't really know the difference. I probably would tell you, I would, if you would have said, what's a fixed versus a growth mindset, I, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't know. What are you even talking about? No personal development, no podcast, no reading of books, nothing. And my circle drained me. And I didn't know this at the time because I was a follower, not a leader. Um, I just kind of went with the flow and just kind of did what people said. And it wasn't until I attended my first SFR in Vegas, 2015, that I saw the people on stage that were walking for director or above, or the ones who were walking for the annual sales or annual, um, mentor. And I was like, Oh, I want to be one of those kind of people, but there's no way I could sell $30,000 in a single cents a year. What is even a cents a year? Like that's how I thought. Um, but I, I attended SFR, I came home, my mindset changed a little bit. I'm still in a very draining circle. And um, let me go ahead and preface all of this again and say, in my eight years, I am my sponsor's only recruit. I am the only person that has ever joined her team. Um, not a lot of guidance um, at all. Obviously from her, she had l literally zero desire to have me join her. She actually tried to get me to join under someone else and someone else said, no, go join underneath her. I want to try to light a fire under her. Like just go join her. Okay. So not part of this, but don't ever give a recruit away. Okay. <laughs> just don't do it. Um, so I was alone a lot in the beginning of my journey. And I remember going to place my very first order, which I had earned shooting star because remember everybody and their mom at work um, wanted some Cincy. I had collected over 500 within a couple of days. But when it was time to sit down and place this orders, I was lost. I cried at my little corner desk in the um, in my kitchen. Was just, I had about this much room in my kitchen a little corner desk, my computer, and I was crying. And my husband was like, what are you crying about? And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and nobody will help me. And he basically said, um, you wanted to do this. So suck it up, dry the tears and figure it out. Okay. So I go to the bathroom. I wash my face. I, you know, I get myself collected and I go back in there and I figure out workstation. Workstation is much different then than it was now. We didn't have the all the welcome videos and all the fancy stuff on the dashboard in the first 70 days when you join. It was just like you see your dashboard and you go train. Okay. We didn't have all the all the extra stuff. So it was a lot of figuring it out on my own. So let's fast forward a few years. I'm still in this same circle and I'm going to also, again, I'm going to preface a lot of things because ever, all of our journeys are different and we all want a different level, like desired level of success for ourself. Um, and for me at the time, I worked full time. I worked that 40 hour, very draining, very draining, very political office. Um, in, in the last four years, I was in crimes against children. So that sucks in itself, right? Um, so being in that type of environment all day long, I wish I would have known, but again, it made me who I am, that I needed an uplifting circle and people to surround myself with after having to deal with that heavy, heavy stuff all day. Because you know, mentally, 
like that can take a toll on somebody. And eventually it took a toll on me. Um, so I still worked my business. I, again, not a lot of help or this is what this business can do for you. Like grow a team, the potential, the no salary cap. I mean, possibilities are endless with Sensi, you guys. They truly are endless. And I didn't have anyone telling me that. Had I been a little bit more go-getter on the research side of it and just wanted to learn more, I could have, but I didn't because I was in a group where people were okay with just doing bare minimum. And again, if that's what you want out of this business, that is great. Looking back now, I wish someone would have pushed me a little bit harder. I wish I would have had that circle of influence to be like, girl, you are amazing. This is what you could do with this with this business. You wouldn't have to live paycheck to paycheck all the time. Y'all could provide more for your kids. You could do more for yourself, for your kids. You could be more available for your family. I was okay. And if you, oh, this is my journey, okay? This is my journey. I don't, if you know my heart, you know me. I don't want this to come off as sounding bad. But I was okay with only promoting up one title per SFA. SFR year. So say I went to my first um, SFR in 2015 as a lead consultant. In 2016, I wanted to be a star. In 2017, I wanted to be a superstar. In 2018, I wanted to be a director, so forth and so on. And um, I did that. And I was super proud of that. And I am still proud of that because I set that goal for myself and I achieved it. Looking back now, I'm like, I wish I would have pushed myself a little bit harder because if I did all of this while working a full-time job, I promoted to director while working a full-time job. Imagine what I could do if I was a full-time consultant. And we all dream about that, right? We all have that goal. Mostly, for the most part, when you speak to someone that's a consultant, they want to eventually make this a full-time gig. Why? Because Cincy is a community, it's a family, it's a great place to belong, and everyone is willing to lend a helping hand wherever it may be. And there are so many people who give and give and give and are willing to lift you up and let you know of the possibilities. So I say that because four years into my journey, I did quit my job. I left my job. Our family circumstances changed. And this is the part where my circle, hey Stephanie, this is the part where my circle changed. Um, I met who is now my Cincy bestie. Um, she's just my bestie, period. Um, I met her in 2016 at Nashville SFR. Um, on the very last night, we had the worst dinner experience ever with our with the big group that we were in and if you were at that SFR you know what I'm talking about right um, there was nowhere to eat anyways that's another that's another story but I our our family circumstances change so I had earned the um, Mediterranean cruise for two and and we attended that in June of 2018 a week long, seven day, one of my most memorable, uh, Sensi trips, one I'm most proud of. And we, we went, we came home. Sorry. If you know me, you know, I'm a crier. Okay. This part of my story gets me emotional because I, I am so passionate about this business and how it has changed my life and how my circle of influence was, was a very pivotal moment in what I'm about to tell you. So this rag is completely dusty. I'm going to be sneezing by the end of the day. Um, we go on this amazing trip. We come home. My husband, he, his schedule, he works seven to three. So he was already at work. I um, dropped my kid off at school. I maybe not even 15 minutes from, from the house headed to work. And he calls me 
Mind you, he has to be at work at 7. He calls me about, um, I guess it was about 7.30. And he never calls in the morning. He always got to work about 6.45 to get ready. And at 7, they were in trucks or in the equipment and they're out on the, on the road. <clears throat> and of course, when you're operating heavy equipment or driving a county vehicle, you can't be on your phone. I just felt sometimes you just know you have that intuition like something is about to go down, right? He calls and I answer and I said, hello. He goes, you're not going to believe this. And I, I knew like I knew he had just lost his job. So he worked for a neighboring county in Roden Bridge. And the way that that county is structured is each different precinct has their own commissioner that oversees that. And that commissioner is in charge, obviously, and they're actually on site. They don't just attend meetings. They attend the meetings, but they're also on site at each precinct. Each commissioner for the Roden Bridge precincts has their own foreman. So here's where I was in a political situation. Now he's in a political situation that the commissioner that he was currently under, that was currently in office, just lost an election. And my husband has been doing construction, operating machines our entire life. He started in high school. I'm 40. He's 40, almost 42. He's old. Um, he's been doing this since he was 16, 17, 18 years old. He is very good at what he does. The new commissioner that was going to start the following year um, had reached out to Jason and said, I want you to be my new foreman whenever I come in in January. Mind you, this is the end of June. We about to go into July, okay? This current that current commissioner was so threatened by Jason and the fact that his current foreman was going to probably lose his job or get demoted to just part of the crew, he let him go. He let him go. And he straight up told him, he said, I know when so-and-so comes in, I've already heard that he's going to bring you up and he's going to make you the foreman and I can't have my guy losing his job. So I'm just going to go ahead and let you go. Like, what the seriously you just let go of your best employee but I promise you when you say or when you hear that everything happens for a reason and God's not going to put you through anything that you can't handle this was truly the best thing that ever happened to our family so um he had been at the county just a little under seven years so he wasn't quite vested enough to where his retirement money was going to draw interest and grow over time. So we pulled it out. We started paying stuff off. And he said, I want to go back into business for myself. He was in business for himself before when we were younger, but we were young and dumb. And he said, we're older, we're, we're wiser. And I just really don't want to work for somebody else anymore. And I'm like, over here, try not to crap my pants. If I'm being quite honest with you. He said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I've already, I've already crunched numbers. We're going to pay off X, Y, Z. We're going to take this cash. I'm going to go buy myself an old tractor. Old in the sense of he's going to go buy a skid steer that had a few years on it, a few hours on it, but it was still a good machine. Um, so we went and bought that cash and we bought a trailer for him cash. In two months of just being in business or actually just that first month, he had almost made more than I was going to make that entire year at the county. Okay. I promoted to director in September of 2017 and we were consistent for three months and then we weren't. And then we dropped into what they call director Q and then I dropped back down to Superstar Consultant for two months, which was July and August of 2018. 
And I was at a point in my journey at work where crimes against children just <laughs> clearly wasn't doing it for me anymore. We were during, we were in the middle of an election period. The office, it was like all eyes on you all the time. The content of work, the material, the things I saw, the things I had to read, the things I had to hear kids say, just the bull shit that I had to deal with. On Sunday nights, I was physically ill. I would be physically sick at the thought of having to go to work. And I wasn't where I wanted to be in my sense of business. I wasn't anywhere close. I wasn't even sure how to be a leader. I wasn't the leader then that I am now. And Jason told me, quit your job. Because by the time I would cry sometimes all the way home. And I would not have anything left to give to my family. I was drained. I spent my entire days, 40 hours a week, week after week after week, pouring into other people's children's with heavy, heavy issues. And I just, I mean, God bless all those people who are still there and who work in that, do that kind of work. It just wasn't for me. Since he had always been my happy place. Whether it was making me $100 or $200 or $1,000. Since he was my, since he was my happy place. And it provided fun money. My ultimate end goal was to always, um, let me see what time it is. My end goal was to always one day do this full time. And he said, Shana, quit. Straight in your resignation. She quit. He said, what I have going is good. He said, we're good for right now. You can, he said, I've seen what you've done with your Cincy business while working 40 hours a week. Imagine what you could do if you had 40 hours a week to do it full time. And I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not quitting. I said, I'm not making the money I'm making. And now mind you, my circle is still of that draining circle. Okay. I tell you all of this because I'm about to get to a pivotal moment where everything changed. Mindset, my circle, my business, my life. Um, I sat on a resignation letter, resignation letter for quite some time. My son was about to start middle school and I was able to take him to elementary and drop him off. He would ride the bus home because school started at 745. I was late every day to work, but I didn't care because I was gonna take my baby to school, okay? Middle school starts at 815. There is no way possible I could be that late to work and not get in trouble. So I waited until a couple weeks before he was going to start. And I finally, something had happened and I was like, screw this. I'm out. I am out. So I started talking to some people in my circle. Now remember... I was a director. I went into the queue in July of 2018. I was a superstar consultant rolling into August of 2018. When I turned in my resignation, I was still a superstar consultant. And I said to somebody in my circle, Jason told me to quit my job. I said, I really want to quit and do Cincy full time. My hope was that I would be encouraged. My hope for this, the point of this conversation, and we were face to face, like this wasn't a phone, this wasn't a text, this was a, I'm gonna go to her house and let's have this conversation. My hope that it would have been an encouraging conversation. But instead, when I said, hey, Jason told me to quit my job. I've always wanted to do this full time. I think I'm gonna do it. And I got, girl, you can't quit your job. You ain't no director. You ain't making no money with Cincy. Y'all can't afford that. Any negative response that could have come, came. And I'm sitting here, and at this time, this was a person that I looked up to um, because she had a director title. Um, I looked up to this person, and please understand 
I'm not talking ill about anybody. This is part of my journey and it is part, it is why I am who I am today and why I do what I do as far as leadership and just being the consultant that I am. Um, I was, I could just, I'm a very emotional person as you can tell. I followed her. I adored her. I thought we were friends and I had just told her this big scary thing that I wanted to do and I was like crushed, just heart broken and crushed to hear you're not a director. You don't make any money. You can't support your family on that. Y'all already live paycheck to paycheck. That's a dumb idea. Like, don't do it. So, I was like, okay. So, I sat on my letter, turning it in a little bit longer. And I told Jason, I was like, I don't think I can do this. And he was like, okay, one, she don't pay your bills. She don't know what how my business is going. Like, you don't listen to her. So, I knew of somebody who was already a full-time consultant and I had started to follow on social media and we had had a few conversations here and there. We weren't, our friendship wasn't to the magnitude then as it is, as it has grown into now, but I felt comfortable enough by watching her live out loud on social media. I followed, I was inspired, I was motivated by her. I watched her do big things and I wanted that for myself. I have an opportunity right now to try to make something better for myself and my family and within my Sensi business. So I, I sent her a, a message and I was like, hey, this is the deal. My husband said to quit. I know you already do this full time. What do you do for insurance? What do you do for this? Like, I'm asking all these different questions. And she was like, girl, call me on your way home. I have a, like a 45 minute drive home. So I called her and we talked the entire way. And she told me every reason why I should, why I could, and how I was an inspiration to other people and how I could get my director title back and I could make it happen. All the reasons I should lifted me up, motivated me, inspired me, and told me why I was worthy enough to do this. And I was like, well, shit, why didn't I talk to her first? So I turned on my letter. And I gave them just those two weeks. And my office manager said, could you give me just like another couple of weeks or a month so we can get your position filled? And I was like, with all due respect, for the entire eight years that you guys have been in office, you've never filled a position that fast. My son starts school on this on the 18th. And I'm going to be there to drop him off and pick him off, pick him up from school. So I gave her my letter. I wrapped up all my stuff at work and I was so, so excited. I was so excited. I came home that month. I changed my leadership style. I, I was just motivated in all the different ways. And I started slowly breaking myself away from this circle because why would I want to continue to surround myself with someone who tells me that you are not worthy, you can't do this, you shouldn't do this because of X, Y, and Z. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this to say, like, go quit your job. Like, I'm saying, like, if it's something that you want to do, make sure that y'all are, you are financially stable. We had an agreement between the two of us, and I point here because his desk is right there. We share an office. We made an agreement between the two of us. You work to get your director title back. You work to make enough to pay this bill, this bill, and this bill. And over time, it has grown from this, these three things to a whole list of things. Income disclosure statement needs to all go through here, okay? Um, I got my title back that month. My team and I regained our director title that same very month. And for the remainder of 2018, for all of 2019, I promoted to star director in 2019. So for all of 2019, all of 2020, all of 2021, I was paid at either director, star director, or a superstar director title. 
I promoted to Superstar Director in November of 2021, which still held true to my ribbon for SFR. When I hit director, I knew it would be more of a stretch to maybe promote higher than director within that one year. So I gave myself two years. And even looking back, I would have been like, well, if you would have just done a little bit more, done not more, done things differently, it may could have happened a little bit faster. But that's my own personal journey. All of our desired, all of our level desired levels of success for this business are different. But I was at director for two years. To the month, I was at director for two years. I didn't hit my two-year mark for SSD, but I was just two months after that. So I'm still within that same time frame with that goal that I set for myself. Why? Because I surrounded myself with people who lifted me up, motivated me, encouraged me, picked me up when I had fallen, or let me know that I am worthy and capable and that People want to hear what I have to say. I I used to be invited to trainings to train people in spite of somebody else. Not to truly help and motivate and inspire someone, but in spite of somebody because somebody pissed them off. No, boo, that is not what we do it. That is not how we do it in Cincy. You show up because you are valuable and you are worthy and capable and you have things to offer to other people. People need to hear what you have to say. And I never knew that of myself. It's kind of backwards, but you were made for more. And would tell you to stop whining and get to work. Yeah. Okay. So we all have those moments where we feel discouraged and down or we can't do X, Y, Z because of yada, yada, yada. Well, you know what? Your sponsor doesn't define your success. Your upline doesn't define, nor are they responsible for your success. You are. But when you don't have a circle of influence, of positive influence surrounding you, you're going to find yourself stagnant and not growing as a person or as a consultant or the leader that you want to be. I am who I am. I am the consultant and the leader that I am today because of everything that has happened to me, all of the growth, all of the failures over the past eight years. Who I am now is not the same person or consultant or leader for that matter. I was when I quit my job in August of 2018, when I changed my circle, when I leveled up the people I surrounded myself with like-minded individuals who want to do more than just the minimum, who want to earn the awards. I used to tell myself, you're not a good recruiter. You will never earn annual mentor. But I did. I used to say, you can't sell $30,000 in a month. But I have for four years in a row. Four years in a row. I quit four years ago. Okay, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So again, go back to the questions that I asked you earlier. Who are the people that you spend the most time with? I want you, and like I said, you don't need to drop it here. You don't have to drop it in the comments of that other post, but I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to write down five people that you spend the most time with. And this can be virtually. Cincy has the ability or gives you the opportunity and the ability to make friends cross country and beyond the borders of the United States or Canada, whatever country you are in. Cincy allows us to make connections worldwide. It doesn't have to be my best friends, my circle of people. There are a few in Texas, but we don't live anywhere close to each other. My And I just talked to one of my son's friends earlier this morning. We were, te or, no, not his son's friends. His son's friend's mom. My son has a friend. I talked, I talked, to, talked to his mom earlier. And we were talking about um, friendships and things like that. Because her son is a senior and mine's a sophomore. And I was like, I don't know what Braxton's going to do when Gavin graduates. He doesn't have any friends his own age. And she was like, well, you better get to interviewing people. And I'm like, that ain't no lie. Like. Let me interview the right kind of people for my son to surround himself with. 
My son is a basketball player. He's an athlete and he wants to take that to the next level. So me as a parent, I need to make sure that he surrounds himself. He has the right circle of influence. He has the right mentors in his life. He has goals set for himself. And first and foremost, he needs to know that I believe in him no matter what. This is no different than doing this for yourself. Teach this to your kids and teach this to your Cincy family. None of my people live close to me. They don't. But I talk to them the most. So write down five people, whether they are close to you or not. Write them down. And I want you to write out beside them. Does this person elevate me or bring me down? Just write elevate or bring me down next to that person. Is this person a proactive getter that exhibits qualities that you admire or are they people, excuse me, who just sit and criticize? Write it down. Are they a go-getter or are they a criticizer? And most, most importantly, does this person motivate or does this person drain you? And if any of these have their draining or they criticize or they bring you down, like I said at the beginning, I don't care if they're a family or not. You need to reevaluate your circle of influence. It matters in life itself. It matters. Personal development matters. Your mindset matters. And all of that comes into effect by the people that you surround yourself with. If my son surrounded himself with a bunch of um, people who... Okay, so he's an athlete. He wants to play at the next level. If he surrounded himself with people who were not, who didn't want to go to, let's say, didn't want to go to college. And I'm not, I didn't go to college. College ain't for everybody. But in this situation, if he hung around a bunch of people who didn't have that aspiration to play ball at the next level or bring his GPA, GPA up, a little more than the required amount of what it what he needs to be to get into a good school to play ball. Where is that going to lead him? He's not going to spend all his days and nights at the park playing and and working on his game. He's not going to spend late nights doing homework. He's going to be scrolling social media and doing God knows whatever a teenager does on their phone. Um, and not working to improve himself in his game to get himself to that next level. What is your next level with Cincy? What is your next level that you want in life itself? Ask yourself, the five people that you spend the most time with, are they draining? Or are they motivating you? Are they lifting you up? Are they telling you, all the reasons why you should go after your dreams or are they pessimistically giving you all the reasons why you should not and a lot of the times someone is going to put you down or not believe in you or downplay your goals and dreams because they don't believe in themselves they are not confident enough in themselves to break the cycle of the things that they've been doing over and over and over to be something more. They don't believe that they were made for more. They don't believe that they can be outside of their realm of their box and be more than what they are. So they're going to put their insecurities off on you. And what's that going to do for you? If you are constantly hearing negative thoughts over and over and over, you're eventually going to believe that. But if you wake up every day and you tell yourself that you're a badass and you can go do X, Y, and Z within your business, then by golly, you're going to get up and you're going to uh, go achieve X, Y, Z. If you're surrounding yourself with people who are lifting you up and telling you, you can do this. You are worthy. You are capable of doing anything that you set your mind to within this business and life itself. Chances are when you wake up every day, you're going to wake up in a happier mood. You're going to wake up in a more positive mood and believe that you are capable. 
And eventually, what's going to happen? You're going to achieve those goals and dreams. And you're going to become a more confident person. And you're going to be able to go share your story. You're going to be able to share your story of how you broke the cycle of being with a fixed mindset, a lack of confidence, and running with a pessim pessimistic attitude and crew to be in everything that you are today and telling other people all the reasons they can do it too. Your circle of influence matters. What you tell yourself every single day matters. And I hope, I hope that you know that one, you are beautiful and you are worthy and you most certainly are capable of achieving anything that you want to achieve in life and in with it, within your sensi business. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, I hope you were able to get something useful out of this. I hope all of this made sense and I will share this article again by Simon Alexander Ong, life coach and author. And I'm about to go order his book energize. Um, I will share this article with you. Um, it has a, where his book is in there as well. If you want to go do that or read that. Um, but I really encourage you guys to do some self reflection and really check out your circle of influence. And if it needs changing by all means, go change it and then go change the world. I love you all. I have so much faith in you. I believe you can be whatever you want in this business. And I will see you guys later. I hope that you are pushing for those promotions. And I hope that you know that you are capable to do so. Have a good rest of your Wednesday. Have an amazing week. And go finish off the month so strong. Because you are worthy. You are capable. And you are so loved within this business. I will see you guys later. Bye.